Hi, internet stranger friends. It's Phoebe with Shrubs That Blooms. We're here and back with a nice little chaos tour of the farm, sort of, or parts of it, or whatever I think is interesting and would like to show people. This is a tub of oaks, and I am so excited about how well they've done. Um, my success is entirely due to acting like a squirrel. I put them in a tub of sand and then I picked them out as they were sprouting in the spring, stuck them in these tubes, and off they went. I put probably two in pretty much every single tube, so you can see they didn't all come up, but there are oaks in 100% of them, at least in this, well, it's a milk crate. Um, there's 35 of these. These are like 60, 60 DO size, I think. Um, so you can get a little kind of look at how they're sizing up. And we've got more down here. This is this is what I started out in and then realized I was going to need something more for the taproot. Because look at that. Uh, let's see if we can get that to focus a little bit better. That is the root trying to escape. So I need to repot these ones pretty quickly here. Uh, realistically, within the next month, I need to get those moved on. I have really much larger tree pots to put some into to experiment with that. But yeah, I've got a whole little forest of oaks here. I'm really hoping I take good enough care of them that they keep sizing up and I can sell some this fall. Uh, I have a mission, maybe it should have been my mission statement, to just get more oaks out into the landscape here because oaks are so important for so many species. They're beautiful trees, they have beautiful fall color. Like, I don't understand um, why they're not used in landscaping more. I had heard that they were kind of hard to start or hard to keep alive or whatever. Um, so we'll see how that all pans out. But right now I am just loving it. Like, look at these. There's 35, no, I might've said that. There's 35 tubes in this crate, which means there's at least 35 oaks in this crate, but I'd guess that there's 50% more than that. So like maybe 50 or so uh, oaks in here, just in this one. And then these are smaller. Um, and then there's a few more on the other side of the greenhouse where the rest of the native plants are. Um, but I just, you know that emoji with the, st the star eyes or hard eyes or whatever? That's, that's what I feel for these every time I look at them. And then the down here we've got the native plants that I started over the fall. I have a lot of thoughts about how to do this differently next year. I had covered the trays with basically frost cloth and not to keep them warm, but to keep magpies from stealing the tags and squirrels from digging up the acorns and stuff like that. I would not do it like that again. I think the wind action on it, like, uh, you know, knocked a bunch of seeds out of the trays because there's zero germination in some of these end trays, which is where that would have been happening the most. There's also stuff where I just haven't done enough research on what the right way to germinate things are. All in all, some great success, some spectacular failures, but I have so many little rabbit brushes. I have a whole tray of sagebrush, a whole tray of basin wild rye, and then a hodgepodge of other little stuff, which I don't think I'll have enough of to try to sell this year. Ooh, and a ton of milkweed. Um, I know people think this is weedy, but I think I will find some folks who are interested in planting this because it's um, like outside of being monarch food and all that stuff, it's just a beautiful plant. Um, in my opinion, I bought these and these are um, woods rose. I wanted to make sure I had some specimens that I could ID properly um, because the difference in the key between nooka and woods rose is not um, super significant to me. So I wanted to be sure I knew what I was doing. Um, yeah, we've got all kinds of little stuff down here. We've got another tray of oaks. Look at that. Um, not quite as successful in that tray. That was one of the earlier ones I planted out. So I think maybe the cold had something to do with the root development or lack thereof. But yeah, I have a lot of thoughts about how to do this differently next year and have better success. Um, because as much as I like to look on the bright side and tell myself I'm learning things, like some of this does make me really sad. Like, where are they? Why didn't they come up? Um, and I'm sure I'll keep learning and it's, you know, quite different than starting tomatoes in your office, which is my kind of background so far. Um, but yeah, more oaks down there. They're just a little bit everywhere. Oh, and then there's up here. I just breezed right past it, but this is Clarkia, one of our native Clarkias, and it's blooming in the pot. So I'm just gonna have to watch for the seed pods to develop and grab them off there once it's done. 
And then we've got, I think it's large flowered colmia over here, also blooming in the pot. This one I got to start naturalizing in the rose patch, which is awesome, but I don't know if we're gonna be able to get in close enough. We'll give it a little experimentation here. This camera gets such great shots sometimes when it feels like it, but it doesn't feel like it right now. Anyway, what I'm trying to show you is that it has blue pollen. There's a little insect on it. Oh, you can kind of see it over here. It has blue pollen. Like, what is that madness? Anyway, so that's pretty cool. I made a couple hanging baskets this year just because I've always wanted hanging baskets. Why not? So this one has a ton of lobelia in it. It's way too many plants. Um, but that's a classic move on my part. And then it's got this like kind of old fashioned sort of petunia in it. They're taller, which are more, they're not really trailing though. Um, and an unintended side effect. So these are in the tobacco family, I think, or the same family as tobacco. So they have these sticky hair where I don't know if there's, I don't know exactly how it works. They're sticky. And so they trap insects on them. So they've caught a ton of gnats that were living in the greenhouse, which is been a pretty, um, I mean, I think it's pretty useful <laughs> to have a, a little trap in here and then you don't have to have those yellow, ugly yellow sticky traps all over the place, which I also have, or had had before most things moved out. And this is the real deal. It's a mess. It's a contained mess, but it's a mess. Um, fig trees that need to get potted, but I come in here and look at these every day because they, they're a variety that still has a scent to them. Um, so it smells quite nice in here just because of these two baskets. Um, and there's some pretty nice colors, like, I don't really go for the hot fuchsia colors, but in this mix, I don't mind, this one's pretty nice. It's like a, I don't know, deep raspberry purpley color. But yeah, if you want, um, some plants to catch insects for you, plant some petunias in your greenhouse, I guess. It's the moral of that story. Quick update on some of the roses. These are all David Austin roses that I'm gonna show really fast. Um, they're blooming. It's very exciting. They're lovely. They smell scrumptious. This is Golden Celebration. And it is um, planted with Scarlet Gilia here. There's, it's a native plant. And it is so fabulous. I put like three of these flowers in a vase in the house. And it scented our whole living room. And we have thrips already, which is whatever. It is what it is. But this is Golden Celebration. And then down here I just saw, I think this is Charles Darwin. It just started to bloom, look at that. Also really fragrant and delightful. I'm a real big sucker for the apricot colors. And then we've got all these buds coming on too, which is super great. And then all of this is oregano that I planted next to the plants. So I planted a lot of herbs last year around the roses to act as living mulch and other stuff like we've got perennial blue flax here. This one has thyme all around it, so there's lots of little um, pollinators on it and a honeybee right there. And I would like to say that it was like really intentional to draw insects in, but it wasn't. It was, I was running out of space and I thought it would be an interesting experiment. But this is Gabriel Oak. I haven't brought any of these in or picked any because they only just started really blooming fully out. But there's quite a few on here and you can see I've been having problems with whitefly this year. Um, I haven't treated it or anything because I'm trying to see if the predators will come through for me and it seems like there aren't whitefly flying off all of it right now like there were a week ago so that's great. We've got native blue flax. I have peonies planted between my roses. Um, they're, this is the first year for them, so they're just growing on. I do not know how to say this one, Specter, Scepter de Isle. I should probably look it up, but it's not quite open yet, but it'll be there soon. Lots more time and white clover taking over the world. A bunch more oregano on this one. And here we have Queen of Sweden. I love this rose. Like, just love this rose. I never have been big for pink things, but it turns out in flowers, pink things are just fine. And not the strongest scent, but still really nice. 
here we've got Olivia Austin. She's a bit droopy for me. We'll see if that ever changes, but um, this one's a bit faded out. And we have a, we've been having a lot of wind, so things are getting kind of battered around the edges, plus some insect damage, but it's just stunning. So absolutely beautiful. Um, best impulse buy ever of these roses. Uh, today I noticed that this one is blooming. This is Poet's Wife. So ooh, look at all those thorns. Oof. But beautiful yellow that fades out. Also got some blue flax around it and then uh, kind of alpine strawberries. This was like a white or yeah, this is a white one. This is ripe. Can you believe that? This is interesting. Another peony mixed in. And this is the the lady that started it all, Lady of Shalott. But this is just, oh my gosh, look at that rose. This is one that I had been staring at and staring at on David Austin's site and finally bought it and bought myself a few others. So most of the ones in this row here. Um, this is Emily, Emily Bronte and it's, this one has gotten really damaged by the wind, I think. Um, you can see it more on this one here because she's the tallest so far of the plants that I planted last year. So I think she's just taking extra damage and it's a pretty pale rose. So it's a lot easier to see that damage on there. But I am pretty thrilled with how this top row is going. Uh, down there on the second row is Colette. It's a climbing rose, which clearly I don't have support for yet, but someday I'll get there. But we're just going to end on this again, because gosh, just look at that. That's so great. So we're standing in the midst of the, it's currently a rose patch, um, but it will be more filled in in the future. There's about 120 rose bushes out here all told, and that includes over there past that cinder block. There's another section that's just hip roses, or well, they're roses I'm growing just for the, the fruits basically to see if I can use those in orna ornamental stuff in the fall. Um, and then up top there is that top row we looked at earlier. So we've got seven rows of roses over here and an additional three much shorter rows over there that just have about 18 or 20 roses in there. Um, there's Ava, always helping. She's been trying to dig out one rose in particular, so I don't know what that's about. I'm not a fan of that situation, but whatever. Um, this is all roses. And then down towards the end, so the, prim the primary direction we get wind from is that way. So I tried... I did, I didn't try, I planted a bunch of shrubs, like different shrubs all down the slope here to see if we can kind of have those act as a bit of a windbreak across at least this back portion of the roses. And then down here, this bottom, oops, there's a finger, I have fingers. This bottom row is all climbing roses and we intend, and by we, I mean, my husband will probably help me because he'll take pity on me. Um, intend to put like a fence up here for them to climb on. So hopefully any wind gusting this way um, is kind of blocked a little bit uphill. Something super cool about this place though, it, like the view is stunning, it's amazing. But then also we get nothing right now, of course, when I want to talk about it, but we get these like turkey vultures and hawks and stuff that hang out in the kettles here and they just like whoosh, whoosh, whoosh around and it's so, so cool to see. There she is investigating another rose to see if she could dig it up. Um, anyway, down here we have all kinds of stuff. Hydrangeas, which I wasn't like super, I've never been super interested in hydrangeas, but I figured I'd plant a couple just to see 
if that changed my mind. I think a couple of them might have died. That's okay. Um, I mean, it sucks, but it's okay. I'll find something else to plant there. And then we've got forsythia. We've got lilacs pretty much along the end here all the way up. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six lilacs right in this area. There's uh, Bride of Veil Spirea here, and they are accompanied by Bleeding Hearts, which look pretty rough, but that's okay because it's almost June and I wouldn't expect them to look very good at this point. And then we've got some smoke bush up here with some Caryopteris kind of smacked in between because I didn't know what else to do with them. We've got a blank row kind of going on because there's a bunch of invasive elms that need to be dealt with first, unfortunately. And then we've got some dappled willow, one native <laughs> um, red twig dogwood that I started from seed last year that survived the winter. And then we've got a couple um, native Rocky Mountain maples, Acer glabrum probably up there. So one up there, no, 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 no. no. That's a nine bark. It's up at the corner here and you can hardly see it. And then one here, they don't look great, but they'll firm up with time. And then we've got four nine barks that are native to the west side of the state. So these aren't very common here. They might be up in the mountains, but they're not down in here where it's so nice and dry, but I think they'll make lovely foliage. And then up here, we've got just hodgepodge stuff. So this is the initial little orchard area <laughs> that I just kept expanding, but that's a that's one of my wish list plants. I just keep seeing these lace leaf elderberries all over the place. And I just thought, how cool would it be to just have a massive one that's full of quail? So big plans for the area. But yeah, this is sort of my before. Hopefully in another couple years, it will be full of roses and all kinds of interesting things um, to pick and to enjoy and have friends over to look at. And, um, you can also see the big garden or the field or whatever you want to call it. Um, I got all the beds built. <laughs> I got aeration run. There's still some more stuff to plant and a lot to seed out, but um, still got to tie the tomatoes in, all that kind of stuff, but it's coming along. Here's my little elderberry row. So I got, I get really um, fixated on certain ideas and then the ideas pass, but the results of my actions in the moment don't. So this one, I don't like, I don't have regrets about any of them for one, but um, when there's a big smashing bush of elderberries, that's actually three bushes of elderberries right there um, that I supposedly am gonna harvest and make my own elderflower water and whatever out of. <laughs> we'll see how, um, how much energy I have for that then because uh, I sure imagined that I would have a lot of energy for it but anyway this is a native one this is the Sambuca cerulea the blue elderberry that's native here in central and eastern Washington um, you can eat the berries but as with all elder elderberries you have to be careful about the seeds in the any part of the actual plant other than the the pulp of the berry uh, is toxic so you have to be careful about how you manage them if you are planning to eat them, but this is beautiful, if you would believe it. I bought this last spring in a gallon sized pot and it was like, it looked barely alive because you know, elderberries in this green state, if they don't harden up and become woody, this all dies back in the winter. So it had done that. And now <laughs> it's like three feet tall and it's only the end of May. So I suspect it will get larger. And then we have three cultivars of black elderberry here. Um, I don't remember which is which, but there's a ranch, a Nova, and a York all in this row. And then I have, I think it's called Wildwood, down here where this feverfew is. It's a really small, tiny plant, but these are, these are starting to pop. Look at that. It's very exciting. I did try making elderflower syrup last year, but it got way too lemony, so I have to dial that back this year. But these are days away from being like fully in bloom, which is pretty exciting. Up on the bank, we've got a couple new friends blooming. So we've got Oregon Sunshine down here. This, I really um, was pleased with how this made, it made a nice mat that occluded all the cheatgrass from coming up, which was pretty cool. So when I died down in the fall or winter or whatever, it matted over and it prevented any grass coming up around it. So that's, I didn't weed that one out. I don't think it's very clean looking in terms of not having invasive grass growing all over it. And then I'm pretty sure this is probably Rocky Mountain Penstemon, I started a bunch from seed a couple years ago and they are just blooming their little, oh, there's a, there's a bee butt. Ah, oh, dang it. 
Okay, sorry, bee. Anyway, native bees like it, so that's part of why it's here, and it's just beautiful. This is one I'm thinking about experimenting with as a cut flower, because it's just, I think if you cut it, maybe less bloomed out than that one? I don't know. You could get a pretty good little, maybe more like that, maybe when the lower parts are blooming, but um, anyway. So we got Oregon Sunshine, and I believe it's Rocky Mountain Penstemon, but um, I have a bad tendency to not label stuff. And then we've got a buckwheat in bloom. Again, I didn't label it. I've got a couple guesses as to what it is, but I'm not gonna say the wrong thing on here, but it is just glorious. Oh, and then up here, I didn't plant this one. Nature planted this one. We've got showy milkweed. And there we go. They're just such cool flowers. There we go. You can really see in there now. There's a wild grape that takes over a good chunk of this slope every year, and I've just been letting it be because eventually I'll get around to clear clearing most of it out probably. Oh, there's yellow bee plant over there. Ooh. Oh, and there's a golden current just popping out of the ground right there. You can see my hose has moved. I did water once because I planted some sunflowers. We've got grass. Oh, I don't know that it's going to pick that up. There we go. We've got grass blooming. This is a native one. Again, didn't label. Don't remember. Started from seed a couple years ago. But what I was aiming at was this one. So this is Rocky Mountain bee plant. Or not Rocky Mountain, I'm sorry. Rocky Mountain is the pink one. This is yellow bee plant. And I don't see a ton of them up over here. But hopefully more will show up. But yeah, we got a few nice blooms going on in the little kind of native patch I've started back here. Um, I think I have Richard's Penstemon about ready to pop over here, or Cutleaf Penstemon, I don't quite remember. Penstemon Richardsonii? Mm, don't take me at that. Like, do your own, do your own math on that, or keying, I guess, but they're about ready to pop. And the sagebrush is looking nice, even out of focus. We've got some flowers that reseeded themselves all over the place. Ooh, look at the antelope brush. Check that out. I started that from seed last year, y'all. Like these grow pretty fast in the right conditions. And they, yes, full disclaimer, they have been getting a little extra water, so they are growing faster than they would in the wild landscape. But I wanted this to fill in and stop being all prickly lettuce. Ooh, look at the, the grapes on those Oregon grapes. Filling in pretty good. These are sure pokey plants. And then the purple sage has just gone out of full bloom. So about a week ago it was in full bloom. And look how many, look how many calyxes and like little bracts and stuff are on here. I'm really hoping this will make some seeds this year. We'll see. Um, there's another one over there. It didn't bloom as well. It's not as big, but that's okay. Yeah, we're looking at maybe some mock orange blooming here in the future. I think the penstemons will just keep on going. I don't have a lot else that probably will bloom um, until the sagebrush and the rabbit brush do later in the season, but I think this is filling in quite nicely. Oop, there we go. And I'm really excited about this sagebrush, or this sage bush, um, because I love it. It's glorious. There's a snake fly in there. Do you see it? Look at that Cheryptheria. 